In the town of Nazareth, nestled in the hills of Galilee, there dwelt a young woman named Mary. She was a virgin, engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, who hailed from the lineage of King David. It was during this time that God chose Mary to play a remarkable role in his divine plan for salvation. One day, as Mary went about her daily tasks, an angel named Gabriel appeared before her in a radiant display of heavenly light. Overwhelmed by the angel's presence, Mary trembled. But Gabriel said to her, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. These words both perplexed and humbled Mary. Sensing her confusion, the angel continued, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary, with unwavering faith, asked the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? The angel replied, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month with her who has been called barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Upon hearing these words, Mary submitted herself fully to God's will, saying, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. Meanwhile, Joseph, a righteous and just man, discovered that his betrothed was with child. Heartbroken and torn, he resolved to divorce her quietly, not wanting to expose her to public disgrace. But as he considered these things, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to make Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her from the Holy Spirit she will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Joseph awoke from his dream with newfound clarity and wholeheartedly embraced God's plan. He took Mary as his wife, cherishing and protecting her, and the child growing within her womb, fulfilling the ancient prophecies spoken of the Messiah's birth. In those days, Caesar Augustus, the Roman emperor, declared that a census must be taken throughout the entire Roman world. To comply with this decree, Joseph and Mary, now heavily pregnant, journeyed from Nazareth to Bethlehem. The arduous journey was filled with weariness and uncertainty, but they pressed on, trusting in God's guidance. Arriving in Bethlehem, the couple sought shelter, but the town was abuzz with others who had also come to be registered. Every inn was filled to capacity, and they found no place to rest. The time drew near for Mary to give birth, and with no other options, they sought refuge in a humble stable. And so it came to pass, while they were there in that lowly stable, that Mary gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, an animal's feeding trough, as there was no crib or bed to be found. In this humble setting, the light of the world entered into the darkness, bringing hope, redemption, and everlasting love. Meanwhile, out in the fields near Bethlehem, shepherds kept watch over their flock by night. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, illuminating the darkness. Overwhelmed with fear, the shepherds listened as the angel proclaimed, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour who is Christ the Lord. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. Filled with awe and wonder, the shepherds hastened to Bethlehem, 
Seeking the child whose birth had been announced by the angels, they found Mary, Joseph, and the baby lying in a manger, just as they had been told. Overflowing with joy, they shared the good news with Mary and Joseph, marveling at the miraculous events that had unfolded before them. In a distant land, wise men, also known as Magi, observed a brilliant star shining in the night sky. Recognizing it as a sign, they embarked on a long and arduous journey to pay homage to the newborn king. Guided by the star, they traveled across deserts and vast lands until they reached Jerusalem, the capital city of Judea. Upon their arrival, the wise men sought an audience with King Herod, asking, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. Troubled by their words, Herod gathered the chief priests and scribes, inquiring of them where the Christ was to be born. They referred to the prophecy of Micah, stating, And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people of Israel. Herod, feigning interest in worshipping the child, secretly summoned the wise men and instructed them to search diligently for the child, promising to pay homage to him as well. Encouraged by Herod's words, the wise men continued their journey, and the star they had seen in the east went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. Entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Opening their treasures, they presented him with the gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, symbolizing his kingship, divinity, and sacrifice. But being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, the wise men departed for their own country by another way, by passing the deceptive king's intentions. And so, in that humble stable, beneath the radiant star, and surrounded by the awe-stricken shepherds and reverent wise men, the nativity of Jesus Christ unfolded, a divine and miraculous event that would forever change the course of history. It was a testament to God's unfathomable love for humanity, His selfless gift of redemption, and His boundless mercy. The scriptures that foretold these events were fulfilled as Isaiah had prophesied. Therefore, the Lord Himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel, from the book of Isaiah, chapter 7, verse 14. And as the psalmist declared, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. From the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verse 6. The nativity of Jesus Christ, with its profound circumstances and divine revelations, served as a beacon of hope for all mankind. A reminder that God had entered the world in human form to reconcile humanity to himself, offering salvation and eternal life to all who believed in him. The importance of and meaning behind the nativity in Christian religion. The nativity holds immense significance and profound meaning in the Christian religion. It represents the birth of Jesus Christ, the central figure of Christianity and the embodiment of God's love and redemption for humanity. The Nativity is a pivotal event that marks the fulfillment of ancient prophecies and the beginning of God's divine plan for salvation. First and foremost, the Nativity signifies the incarnation of God in the person of Jesus. God took on human form, entering the world as a vulnerable baby born to humble parents in Bethlehem. This act of divine condescension demonstrates God's deep love for humanity as he willingly embraced the limitations and experiences of human life. Through the nativity, Christians believe that God made himself accessible, relatable, and approachable, bridging the gap between the divine and the human. The nativity also highlights the humility and obedience of Mary and Joseph. Mary, a young virgin, faithfully accepted the angel Gabriel's message that she would conceive by the Holy Spirit. Despite the challenges and potential social stigma, she willingly embraced her role as the mother of the Messiah. Joseph, too, demonstrated great faith and obedience by accepting Mary as his wife and becoming a loving and protective guardian to Jesus. 
Their unwavering trust in God's plan serves as an example of faithfulness and surrender to God's will. Furthermore, the circumstances surrounding the Nativity point to Jesus as the long-awaited Messiah and Savior. The prophecies of the Old Testament, such as Isaiah's prediction of a virgin giving birth, in the book of Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14, and Micah's reference to Bethlehem as the birthplace of the Messiah, find their fulfillment in the Nativity. The arrival of the wise men from the east, guided by a special star, affirms Jesus' significance as the King of the Jews and the one worthy of worship. The nativity scene itself, depicting Jesus lying in a manger, surrounded by Mary and Joseph, shepherds and the wise men, symbolizes humility, simplicity and the accessibility of God's salvation. The manger, a feeding trough for animals, highlights the lowly and humble circumstances of Jesus' birth emphasizing that God's gift of salvation is for all, regardless of social status or worldly significance. Moreover, the Nativity sets the stage for the larger story of Jesus' life, ministry, crucifixion, and resurrection. It signifies the beginning of God's redemptive work in the world, as Jesus came to offer himself as the ultimate sacrifice for the forgiveness of sins. Through his birth, Jesus inaugurated a new era of grace, love, and reconciliation between God and humanity. For Christians, the Nativity is a source of hope, joy, and celebration. It reminds believers of God's profound love manifested in the person of Jesus, who came to bring light into the darkness, to offer salvation and eternal life to all who believe in Him. It serves as a powerful symbol of God's presence among His people, His desire for relationship, and his unwavering commitment to redeem and restore humanity to himself. The Nativity, also known as Christmas, is one of the most widely celebrated holidays in Christianity. It commemorates the birth of Jesus Christ and holds a central place in the liturgical calendar of many Christian denominations. The celebration of the Nativity varies across different cultures and regions, but there are some common practices and traditions observed by Christians worldwide. Christmas Eve Services Many churches hold special services on Christmas Eve, typically in the evening, to mark the beginning of the Christmas celebration. These services often include scripture readings, hymns, carols, prayers, and the retelling of the Nativity story. Some churches also incorporate a midnight mass or candlelight service to welcome Christmas Day. Advent Season The period leading up to Christmas is known as Advent, which usually starts four Sundays before Christmas Day. It is a time of preparation and anticipation, focusing on themes of hope, peace, joy and love. Advent wreaths with four candles are often used to mark the progression of the season with one candle lit each Sunday. Nativity Scenes Many Christians set up nativity scenes or cribs, which depict the birth of Jesus in a stable with Mary, Joseph, shepherds, wise men, and various animals. These scenes serve as visual reminders of the humble circumstances of Jesus' birth and are often displayed in homes, churches, and public places. Christmas Carols Christmas carols play a significant role in the celebration of the Nativity. Christians sing songs that retell the story of Jesus' birth, express joy and praise, and celebrate the meaning of Christmas. Caroling is a popular activity during the Christmas season, and many churches organize special carol services. Gift giving. The tradition of giving and receiving gifts during Christmas has its roots in the biblical account of the wise men presenting gifts to the infant Jesus. Christians exchange gifts as a symbolic gesture of sharing God's love with others, just as God gave the ultimate gift of His Son to the world. Acts of Charity Christmas is a time of compassion and generosity. Inspired by God's love for humanity, many Christians engage in acts of charity and outreach such as donating to the less fortunate, volunteering at shelters, or supporting various charitable causes. Feasts and family gatherings. Christmas is a time for family gatherings and festive meals. Christians come together to share a special Christmas feast 
enjoying traditional foods that vary according to cultural customs. Overall, the celebration of the nativity in Christianity is marked by joy, gratitude, and reverence for the profound significance of Jesus' birth. It is a time of spiritual reflection, fellowship, and outreach as Christians embrace the message of hope and salvation brought by the newborn King. The painting known as the Mystical Nativity portrays a scene filled with jubilation and joy, blending earthly and celestial delights. The presence of angels dancing gracefully at the pinnacle of the artwork adds to its ethereal atmosphere. Standing prominently at the top of this painting is Sandra Botticelli's name, alongside a foreboding inscription. The inscription on top of the painting, written in Greek, translates as, this picture, at the end of the year 1500, in the troubles of Italy, I, Alessandro, in the half time after the time, painted according to the 11th chapter of St. John, in the second woe of the apocalypse, during the release of the devil for three and a half years. Then he shall be bound in the 12th chapter. We shall see him buried as in the picture. Botticelli, influenced by the upheavals in Europe and possibly believing himself to be living in the Great Tribulation, anticipated the arrival of Christ's millennium, as described in the Book of Revelation. John chapter 11 refers to a miracle performed by Jesus where he raised a man named Lazarus from the dead. Through this artwork, Botticelli has related the raising of Lazarus to the second coming of Jesus Christ during the time referred to as the end of days, or the apocalypse. John chapter 12 refers to the triumphant return of Jesus Christ to Jerusalem, where he is ultimately crucified for the cleansing of sin from humanity. Eerie foreshadowing can be observed as the vulnerable child rests upon a sheet reminiscent of the burial shroud that will eventually wrap his lifeless body. The cave the backdrop for this scene evokes thoughts of the child's future tomb. On the left side of the painting, the kings stand without any material gifts, offering only their unwavering devotion. At the painting's zenith, twelve angels adorned in the colours of faith, hope and charity engage in a graceful dance, holding olive branches in a circular formation. Above them, the heavens open up in a magnificent golden dome. Conversely, at the painting's base, three angels embrace three men, seemingly lifting them from the ground. These angels hold scrolls bearing the Latin words, Peace on earth to men of goodwill. In contrast, seven devils flee to the underworld, some impaled on their own weapons. In the Renaissance era, Last Judgment paintings depicted the judgment of the damned and the saved during the second coming of Christ. By echoing this artistic tradition, the mystical nativity encourages contemplation not only of Christ's birth, but also of his eventual return, as noted by art historian Jonathan Nelson. That's about all I have for you today. I've made an entire video regarding the intense history surrounding the creation of this painting that you can view here. Thank you for taking this journey with me through the art and story of the nativity.